Thanks for joining us today. I understand anything above uh, seven magnitude is, is strong. This was listed as a 7.4. Can you share how much damage would be expected from something like this? Sure. Um, a 7.4 7 is a large earthquake. Typically, we'd see perhaps a half dozen of those around the world uh, each year. But the difference this time is it was so close to major population centers. So it's, it's really that combination of earthquake magnitude and distance um, to population centers that really determines the, the impacts of, of an earthquake. So this one being within about 30 kilometers of a major city and only 140 kilometers from Taipei, um, it, it, it caused very strong shaking and as, as we all know, um, you know, significant damage. It came from about, or the epicenter was about 15 kilometers below uh, land, below surface. Is that deep? Is that shallow? How does that compare? Yeah, that's relatively shallow. So uh, anything in the in the uh, zero to 10, 20, 30, even 30 kilometers is a relatively shallow earthquake. So um, in other parts of the world, earthquakes are down at 50 or 100 kilometers or even several hundred kilometers. So th this was shallow and the closer to the surface, the stronger the shaking from, from the earthquake. So, uh, John, we know Taiwan sits on what's called the Pacific Ring of Fire. How active is the location where, where Taiwan is sitting? Yeah, it's it's a really active region. It's a really complex tectonic setting where, where these giant tectonic plates are moving at about eight centimeters per year. So roughly as fast as your fingernails grow. Um, so over, you know, over 100 years, that's eight meters of, of movement that has to take place along these fault zones. Um, so it's, you know, it's, the plates are moving much faster than they are along the west coast of Canada or even faster than along the San Andreas Fault. So um, it's an active region. We've seen seven earthquakes over the past 50 years, larger than the one um, that occurred today. So earthquakes in the magnitude 7 to 7.7 to .7 range. So it is a very active region. Um, earthquakes are, are not a surprise in this part of the world. And certainly, um, you know, people in uh, in Taiwan are, are very familiar with the earthquake hazards and risks. Can you give me an example or expand a little bit on some of the past earthquakes they've seen, how serious they have been? Yeah, one of the largest was the Chi Chi earthquake of 1999. So that was the 25 years ago, it was a 7.7 .7 earthquake, which doesn't sound that much larger than a 7.4, but in fact, the shaking, the strength of shaking was double um, yesterday's earthquake. So the, the earthquake 25 years ago, twice as strong in terms of shaking levels, and it, it released about three times more energy than yesterday's earthquake. So it was a much, much larger event. And it was also, the Chi Chi earthquake was closer to the to the um, the west coast of Taiwan, which is much more populated. So, um, but we've seen other magnitude seven to seven point four earthquakes um, in the region. There have been about ninety over the past um, just over a hundred years. Major earthquakes of the magnitude six seven range. So it's uh, it it is a really seismically active region where these tech giant plates are are colliding and moving apart. How long can they expect? aftershocks to continue and how strong are they typically? Yeah, so on average, the largest aftershock you might expect to see would be one magnitude unit smaller than the main earthquake. So in this case, about a 6.4, which has already happened. That, that aftershock, there was a 6.5 aftershock within 13 minutes of the main earthquake. So that's sort of the average of what we would see in terms of the largest aftershock. Um, in terms of the duration, this this sequence seems to be very active, uh, more active than most. And so there have been dozens and dozens of magnitude um, four and a half to, to six aftershocks over the past 24 hours. We, we can expect these to continue for weeks and probably even for months. Um, so the aftershocks are, you know, very frightening for people who have been through the main earthquake and aftershocks, although they're smaller, if they're closer to you, they can produce strong shaking, perhaps in some cases, even stronger shaking than for the main earthquake. Yeah, but everybody's already on edge, so I, I'm sure it's quite terrifying. John Cassidy, appreciate you joining us on this. So thanks for sharing your expertise tonight.